to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep. I perchance to dream, for in that dream what and for in that sleep what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. And with that, I give you Mikey Bananas and Grown Man Record Night. Uh, hey man, what the hell is all that shit? Oh, it's, uh, it's uh, William Shakespeare's 450th birthday today. Oh yeah? 450? And I, I had no Shakespeare records. Hell, I thought 38 felt bad, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm 37. <laughs> oh, 37. I keep doing that. You think you're old. Yeah. We gr you're grown. I'm grown. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Uh... That was a little, uh, I think, Hamlet? Yeah. But it was terrible. It was it was condensed. There's a bunch of other shit in there. Yeah, well, that's cultured business, though. I messed it up. That's cultured business. That's cultured business. Yeah, hey, folks, welcome to Grown Man Record Night, your favorite Friday night stop for fun and entertainment uh, and record business. We got vinyl record business to talk about this evening. We're There's a, a lot going on around this area. That's true. We'll talk about that a little uh, bit. We had record store day last weekend. Uh, that went on everywhere. Everywhere. It was, Lots a, it of was people, a record record store day. I heard that. Uh, record sales for record store day. A lot of people got out supported their uh, local independent record stores, which is always a good thing. I support them all the time, so I didn't feel the need to go out and stand in the line. But uh, hey, okay. good for them, man. I'm glad everybody. I've talked to uh, you've talked to one local record store. I've talked to another one. I think uh, we've had another gentleman that's talked to another local record store, and everybody said they've done really, really well. Uh, sold, well, good. Sold a lot of business, and uh, that's what it's all about, man. That is what it's all about. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. So we're here on a Friday night, just getting loose in the caboose and tighten the turbine, uh, getting ready for a cool weekend coming up. Wanted to mention everybody knows. Uh, everybody knows we got the um, uh, YouTube channel where we're, uh, we pump all these episodes every every week. They'll end up there Saturday, Sunday. You know, we did a live show on Friday night on Ustream, oh, and yeah. then we, we dumped these episodes, the little talk show segments, to the YouTube channel. YouTube. Uh, well, we got a good uh, good group of guys. I try to put stuff on YouTube. Ladies. But they don't let me put stuff on YouTube. Yeah, you got popped. I got, I, every time I put something up, they pop me now, oh. so I just give up. I tell you what, man, I drink a little... Uh, what you got there? You know, recently I went to saw uh, went and saw Doug Stanhope, comedian, one of my favorite comedians, and he was uh, he was a big proponent of uh, pop all vodka, and he had the, the the ten dollar half gallon jug up on stage, and he was like, "This is what we drink." And he's like, "It's uh, you know, screw all your Grey Goose and crap." It's like that, whatever. And uh, he's like, uh, "We tried to get sponsorship from Popov and uh, hit him up and was like, look, we're doing these tours and we're drinking a lot of Popov and we keep talking about it because it's good value and it's a good deal." And uh, Popov was saw some of his act and was like, "That's uh, why not not let's not mention us anymore." Uh -huh. uh, and so he's like, Is "So that contrary to their company values or I, something?" I guess so. And so, so he was like, uh, "You know what? I'm going to promote them whether they like it or not." Okay. And. Uh, the girl sitting beside us, Sweet T, who's a good friend of the program, she uh, whispered in my ear, Mitchum. Yeah. And uh, I know, yeah, I think we kind of support Mitchum, and, and I, I've heard a buzz that they actually have run with our ideas. Some they, got, they got some ads Let's on go with TV. our latest advertisement down here that we did for Easter. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, you, you're playing... Oh, the Easter. The it's a Easter? little... Uh, you, you maybe say uh, line crossing. I don't know. No, it doesn't cross it. It doesn't cross a it line. It approaches it. It approaches a Fast. line. It approaches it, a line. I'd say it crosses the line. It cr oh! Okay. I see what you did there, SF. SF coming strong on a Friday. This damn early in the show. You gonna bring out the big guns that early? What you got to close with? If you started with that, what the hell are you closing with? I got nothing. God, I'm drinking a lot of vodka. So this family goes in to see a, a talent agent. Right. And he says, uh, I got this great act. And the talent agent says, okay, tell me about your act. You better stop right there. <laughs> we ain't got time for that. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyhow, hey, you may be wondering why we're dressed like an older couple and the fact that we're dressed the same. <laughs> on, on vacation. 
Check what you got? Out. I got the same thing. You got that too? Yeah, and also Boss Man's got the, uh, is in the house and has got the same joint up on. <laughs> it's uh, it's our good friend Sean zero uh, six one two on YouTube. Um, show him show him your shirt, the, we, the logo. Yeah, we picked I, I up can't these get up. Uh, really My cool. My mic's got me pinned. Record uh, collector profile shirt. A little shirts. higher. A little higher. Uh, it's got cool shit. Right, on a little the, higher. Right there. Yep. Yeah, cool shit on the front. Cool shit yep. on the back. Um, and uh, we picked up some of these records, and he sent them to us. And uh, not only that, check this out. Here's the box the shirts came in, right? Oh, you got extras. Yeah. And uh, in the box also came this nice letter. Uh, please allow me to read it to you real quick. Greetings, Mr. Bananas and Friends. Enclosed are the Uber Limited Edition RCP t shirts and custom hot stickers. Um, yeah, hold up those stickers there, uh, boss man. Uh, Hot off the presses, he says. Thanks for the support. No problem. Uh, also included are three LPs and a 7-inch for the GMRN library. If you've got any of them already, feel free to trade them amongst yourselves or add to them the GMRN record raffle deal. Enjoy. Oh, and don't sleep on that Phil Collins uh, album, Son, Earth, Wind, and Fire Horns. More about that lately. So here's what we got. Not only did we get these dope-ass shirts and some cool stickers, Mug sent us some, uh, sent us some straight business, son. Look at this. We got a, a 45 here, and it's from Bell and James, 1978 on A&M, and it's uh, living it up. And the parenthetical statement is Friday night. Living it up, living it up. Yeah. Friday night. So how uh, how appropriate for the show. You know? Yeah, it should be maybe it should be your theme song. That's a good theme song. You know, we thought we had that good theme song, uh, Thank God It's Friday, that song. Well that's a good one. Actually that uh da, ba, ba, da, 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 that uh, John Coltrane I thought was a really good one. Giant Steps maybe? Oh yeah, it sounds like a talk show entrance yeah. music. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, all that will get us popped. Oh see so. saw, this is the record he was talking about. Phil Collins, Hello, I must be going. It's oh, yeah. uh eighty two on Atlantic. And he says the horn sections in this is, is uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And I'm not real familiar with this. Well, I don't care anymore. We should go from I to, don't uh, care anymore. Get some yeah. credit to Groucho Marx. No more, no more, no more. I must be going. So, uh. You can't hurry, love. Okay. Mm, sorry. No, you just have to wait. Yeah. See, it don't come easy. It it's a game easy. of love and take. It's a game of love and Sweet. take. So we're going to jam that business right there. So it's got some great horns on it. Quality, quality. Um, also sent us, I was not familiar with this record at all. Uh, Lena Vovich. Lovich. Lovich? Yeah, Lovich. Uh, Stateless is the album. Lovich. This is her first uh, album, uh, known as like a late 70s kind of new wavy kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh, this is 79 on CBS. Kind of Never nice. heard this before Laurie, in my life. Kind of Laurie Andersonish. That's what I thought. Well, just from looking at the... Uh, looking at I the, remember her. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. That's a little before my time. Okay. But uh, when I looked that up, and I, or, I mean, when I opened that and I looked at the uh, the cover and just kind of the art, and the, I was like, yeah. I, this kind of reminds me of Laurie Anderson, yeah. which we're big fans of. Obviously, we went and saw her uh, live not too long sure. ago last year. Okay, all right. Uh, and the, the, the last one, check this out, man. Stevie Wonder, Inner Visions. Yeah. I've got Inner Visions. Uh, my copy is beat up, you know, too high, um, higher ground. I mean, a lot of just classic banging tracks. Living for the city. Looks like a, for the city. Looks like a great copy, man. But not only that, <laughs> what we're jamming in the background of us here, you know, normally we take a random stab in the bologna stack to have something to yeah, play. Yeah, sometimes it's nice. But tonight, tonight we have the best background music for any GMRN segment yet. Hell I yeah. Right, man. I think you're right. We're not going to get popped. Nope, we're not going to get popped. It's uh, some records Sean sent me before. This is his um, hip-hop instrumental stuff. It's got a bunch of beats and sounds and stuff on it. There are, uh, two records he sent me. And uh, he had mentioned before that, you know, because I was talking about getting popped by YouTube. He's like, man, you can bump those behind anything. And what a better night to bump them than tonight. This is kind of the homage show, getting the dope shirts, getting cool stuff in the mail. We appreciate Sean. Maybe we just make these the background music default. That's true, man. That could be the uh, the default beat. I'm digging it. Yeah. I wish it was louder, I'm actually. I'm digging it, too. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll, we'll jam those a little full speed here. Do the robot you can, you can turn the background. You can turn, the, man, you can turn the headphones off. Bossman's going to do the robot coming up. Okay, let's um, 
You know, this weekend we got a little uh, thing going on. Uh, a couple of big festivals in North Carolina. Well, yeah, they're kind of conflicting with each other. I think. Yeah, very uh, opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of music festivals. But I would go to either. Either would and be I've great. been to either. Yeah, I'm well, going to go to one tomorrow. But uh, and we're talking about this weekend either, either is uh, Moog Fest up in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. A lot of cool bands, a lot of great bands over several days. Legends. Who all's playing there this year? Oh God, I don't know. It's a lot of good. I mean, there's been huge hits in the past. Um, I didn't go this. This is the first year I haven't been in the last three or four years. So. Yeah, but um, uh, I do know one group that's playing, which is kind of a big deal. Well, yeah, like, kind I, of I a big deal. It. it is a big deal. We're talking about Kraftwerk. Yeah. So I pulled out the old uh, Audubon album. Are they playing at Moog Fest? Uh, they're yeah tonight. Moog Fest. Moog. Yeah, Moog, Moog Fest is. They changed it a little. They it. They have all kinds of things going on during the day that's more technical and, and, and educational. And at night they have, and it's a lot of it's a lot of electronic artists, a lot of DJs put on the Dan Deacon kind of things. Yeah, Dan Deacon, uh, Black Moth, Super Rainbow, Black Moth, Super Tobacco, Rainbow, or Tobacco, or has tobacco. played quite a bit. I saw. I know I saw them. you've seen Promise, Flame and Lips has been up there. Yeah, yeah. So here's, it's it's kind my, of a varied uh, craft work album. Uh, Tangerine Dream was her last year, and I, I could have kicked myself for not going to see any of them. Yeah. Craftwork uh, this year. They're putting on three shows. They're putting on a 3D show, whatever that means. I saw a Primus 3D show. Eh. It was... I'm going to Primus. Yeah, there you go. Cameraman's going to Primus Cameron, coming just up. just said he's going to Primus. Uh, so, uh... But yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Is this the, whole the first time they've area. done it in the spring? It is. They this used to do the it, used to do it around the... Halloween, which I love, because Asheville, Asheville, North Carolina, has a lot of eccentric people and they do it up Halloween very well. A lot of great costumes, and so you're walking downtown in the middle of the night, heading to your next show, and a freaking alien monster comes walking by, you know. Plus up there you get to see what? the old colored leaves in the fall, Oh, it's pretty, man. it's pretty. Get up all But it would get a little too way. cold. Sometimes it would, it snowed one year when I was there to see the flame and lips. Oh. So they moved it to the spring. It just happens to be the same weekend as something else going on you what uh, we're actually that. going to um tomorrow uh me and you and cameraman are going up, up to the uh, foothills the foothills of north carolina to merle fest merle fest now merle fest is on the uh, campus of wilkes county community college, wilkes community college. on the uh, yep. merle watson stage and the surrounding areas correct there's a hey, number of stages that, um, it's right near where well, Zach Galifianakis is He lives is from. nearby. That's true. He lives nearby. He has a farm nearby there. What's the What's the thing behind Merle Fest? You know anything about how it's Uh, Well, Merle Watson was a picker. Was and a picker. his dad is a man named Doc Watson, which I hope you've heard of because he's a legend. He's a blind man who plays flat pick and guitar and is, is amazing. Yeah. Well, he died just a couple years ago. Yeah, that's right. Um, but every year they, they put on a festival in honor of Merle. It's called the Merle Fest, and it's, uh, we're not playing that album again, are we? Um, but it's, it's a wonderful time in, in, uh, in North Carolina, up in the mountains, where you hear a oh, lot yeah. of bluegrass, but you hear other things that are, I, I saw Robert Plant there. A lot of Americana. A couple of years ago. It's an Americana music he was Robert doing. Plant with the Cross? No, no, another group. Traditional music, uh, Americana, bluegrass, yeah. some stuff that kind of goes into a little rocky jam band well, kind of stuff. Well, there's one thing that happened. To have happened. the Buffalo plays. It's great live sound. The, the foothills, the mountains, make it so that the sound hits these hills and it just really, really sounds great. And there's this thing called the hillside stage. Uh -huh. And if you ever get to see the hillside stage, the, the, the audio is the best live audio I've heard ever in an outdoor arena like that. And uh, there's this thing called the, the Waybacks Album Hour. And uh -huh. every year, the Waybacks, a group out of California, they, perf they perform an album in its entirety, and it's usually a classic rock album. Right. Um, Played they, some cra classics. That, what are they, the Beatles? They've done Sticky Fingers, Rolling Stones. They've done Abbey Road. They've done Eat a Peach. They've done, but here's the kicker. Before the show, weeks before the show, they put out clues. They don't tell you what album they're going to do. They put out these really obscure clues, and you try to figure out what album it's going to be. So you don't know until they hit the first chord what it's going to be. So we're looking forward to this year. Yeah. We have a feeling we know what it is. Um, so the clues have led us to believe that it might be Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young's Deja Vu album. So that's what I'm hoping it's going to be. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Yeah. The Deja Vu album. Yeah, one of the clues, yeah, one of the clues was a catcher, a catcher in the rye, uh -huh. W-R-Y, waxes nostalgic. Huh, huh. And if you know anything about 
So it's not the catcher in the rye of the album. It's a catcher in the rye. W R Y. So a very rye catcher would have been Yogi Berra. Yeah. Yogiisms. Yogi was known for his yogiisms. Sure. And he said one thing about nostalgia. He said, "It's like deja vu all over again." <laughs> right. Uh, it's a famous yogiism. It's Take like it. deja vu all over again. So I'm thinking deja vu. That's what it might be. So, so, so here's is, deja vu. This is Steve Fever's guess on the riddle here. This is my and we'll guess. See, and we'll it's see. many many people's guesses. There have been a lot of guesses. Yeah. So it's a fun time. It, and I think you're going to enjoy many it. Many people. That's cool, though. So we'll, we'll see if that holds true. But uh, I've taken the liberty to pull a few records of some people that are going to be at Merle Fest that I actually had in my collection, just to give everybody a little scope of what's going on here. Uh, Legend is playing Sunday night. Speaking of Merle. Merle Haggard. And it's not named after him. Not named after him. Even though you will probably guess that first. Uh, that's You know, we played the Okie from Muskogee, the live joint. We played that here recently, so I'm not going to show that one. We'll show this one. That's a cool one. And uh, here's one Steve Another brought. greatest hits record of his. Earlier. Hey, greatest uh, hits. Check this out, folks. This is not something that you maybe would associate with Merle Fest, and I'm making a small leap and almost a leap of faith here. We're going to see the Steep Canyon Rangers tomorrow, and uh, here's a Steve Martin uh, record. If you've ever, you know, you know Steve Martin plays banjo, and he's gotten really more into playing bluegrass in the last few years, and he does his well, music he, mostly with the, the Steep Canyon he Rangers. He performed, I think last year he performed with Steep Canyon Rangers and at Merle Fest. He is absolutely... He's a great banjo yeah, player. He's wow. a great banjo he's player. He's a terrific banjo player, and that's his group, the Steep Canyon Rangers. Well, we know for a that's fact, really not his group. Well, they, right. they are a group without, that's who with, he plays without, without with. him. No, no, no. That's who he they plays They are their with. own entity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, but they're, they're on the map. They're playing, they, yeah. they're <laughs> playing at them. least three times during the festival, and I'm thinking maybe one of these performances, Steve Martin may drop in unannounced and jam with them. There it's not on the thing. Right. They're not saying that's going to happen, but I think that that's maybe a good possibility. Okay. Also, playing tomorrow night at 7P, little Ricky Skaggs. This is a solo record from Ricky Skaggs, but uh, he's playing with Kentucky Thunder, the bluegrass stuff he does. I've uh, seen it, and it is excellent. Kentucky Thunder. Oh, Terrific yeah. wow. musicianship They're, uh, they're banjo players from Raleigh. Oh, he, yeah? And he is... Cool, very cool. Also, can't... I mean, look at this, maybe. Doc Watson on stage featuring Merle Watson. What? This is on Vanguard, Double yeah, LP. Merle, Mer, don't get me wrong. Doc oh is a legend. God. Merle was a great, great guitar Merle, player. Yeah. Merle took Doc's stuff to a second level. If, if you don't know, Doc, uh, Merle Watson actually died uh, in the middle of the night uh, on a tractor. Yeah, that's a weird story. Yeah, he died on a tractor, and it was late at night, and he probably shouldn't have been on that tractor. I think he was probably... He might have had a little of that, that mountain water that comes from that area. Yeah, that. You know, that, Wilkesboro that, that, happens that, to be the died. birth. He, he Wilkesboro the happens to be the birth of NASCAR. Happens to be the, these guys are running moonshine, and uh, you know that's that's where How that comes from. How did he die from. on a tractor? He fell his off. heart stopped. He fell off. His heart, oh, no, stopped. his heart stopped. Or his brain might have stopped. Jesus said, "You're done, son." He knew You're that. Done, if son. He wants to. He that's wants how he to. died. He wants to. That's how he died. He'll do it. Uh, okay, I tell you what, let's run through a little bit of what we play. So anyhow, we're going to go check out Merle Fest. We may do a little Girl Man Record Night, a little report out on the spot, and we may be show it next week on the show. Who knows? Depends if I can sneak in any uh, party liquor. And that's why I think that's why I, I went and bought a bunch of I bought a bunch of vodka so I can put this in water bottles. Yes, just get drunk before you go. No, I'm just going to put this in water bottles and then stick it in my jock because my jock's so big. Anyhow, ain't nobody going to notice nothing about it. <laughs> What's this putting Ziplocs? Oh, Ziplocs. Ah, hello. Zip Welcome to Sanford work. Stadium. Let's go see a football game. Get your yeah. bag full of liquor and let's go. Yeah, but a water bottle, you can pull it out in the crowd and nobody's going to say nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah, just pull out your bag. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's my colostomy bag. F off. <laughs> Mind your own business. Uh, yeah, I drink my own urine. What's up to you? Hey, what do you think we uh, run through the uh, records we played so far? Okay, season? let's do that. Jean-Luc Ponty. Uh, Enigmatic Ocean, fantastic record. Love John Luke Ponty, terrific violin player. He's a pretty man. Put on a Funkadelic record. Uh, uh, Uncle Jam wants you. This is in really shitty shape. I can't believe I actually put it on. Uh, it was in terrible shape. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Uh, you're thinking. To, you're thinking when you see that I again, you're going to you're gonna pick need, it up. I should put a mark on. It's terrible. Big X. Uh, it's terrible. I need to pick that up. It's a great record. Terrible yeah, shape. But don't play it for the show. That's the takeaway. Terrible shape. Jazz, the '50s volume. Uh, Two. This is a, a Pacific Jazz compilation. Fantastic. Listen to some of these players. The 1950s? Art Pepper, Chico Hamilton, Chet Baker, Bob Brookmeyer, Jim Hall, 
Montgomery Brothers, West Montgomery. Jerry Mulligan, Cannonball, yeah. Adderley, Gill Evans. Oh, Fantastic. I picked up last week, uh, just got around to playing it on the show this week, Spooky Tooth. Uh, you broke my heart, so I busted your jaw, baby. Grant, fantastic classic rock album. Not heard this before. <laughs> jammed, man. We played one yeah. side, jammed all the way Was through. Really impressed with that. Real, impl <laughs> <laughs> Real impressed with that. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, VCLT from Sean, we played Duke Genesis. And uh, this was actually some VCLT from our good friend Michael Cool, who uh, the legend... Oh, is that the one we end up shooting the other one? Yeah, record? the Girl Man Record Night legend is, I was playing a really shitty copy of uh, Duke on the air, and he was like, man, that's a really shitty copy. He's like, oh, I found you another one. I'm going to send you one. Uh, wow. The only thing is, you just got to blow the other one up or shoot it with a shotgun. Give me that. Give me that. Super so, we, so we posted a... Um, so we posted a... Uh, a video of me shooting the shit out of it with a shotgun. How about a little James Brown? We had to, that got a little slow there toward the end, uh, so we had to pick it back up a little James Brown. It's a mother. This album contains mother popcorn. Woo. Oh man, this is a great shit record. is smoking. Pick this up for a pretty good price because the cover's in really shit shape. Whatever, man. The album still jams. Um, our man Jay is in the house this evening. And uh, Jay had man, picked this up for a damn quarter. A quarter. Wish you were quarter. here. Wish you were here. Covered. It's not in the best shape, but the record had it had a little bit of surface noise, ah, a little bit of something for, going on. But for a quarter, man, I'd buy that good. for a. You also played dollars. that Return to Forever album. Yeah, but that's not part of this. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you segment. played it. Different segment. We did play uh, Super Tramp. Jay, take your damn record. Breakfast, breakfast in America. That thing is. Oh that thing yeah. Is, that thing is a, a a breakfast buffet. Is what that is. Yeah, yeah that's good stuff. stuff. It's a breakfast buffet. That's fantastic stuff. Okay. It's a monster. It's a monster. I tell you what. Let me have that. You take it. You take Do it. Do something with it. Let's take this opportunity to slide on over to a good old fashioned dig of the damn week. Can you go to graphic? What, what, Woo! What, what, what? It's dig of the week time, baby. And we got good stuff uh, to show everybody. Some stuff I picked up uh, this week in our local stores. Plus some stuff Steve brought. You brought some stuff, Steve? Just a couple things. You brought a couple things, Steve? Two tree. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, man. All right. I'll let you start off, Steve. What you bring? Well, you want to throw my vault graphic up real quick? Okay. I know he's asking him to right. do a lot. Wow. you uh, saying you're going the, to the vault? We're going to from, from, from the vault. Okay. Jesus. Uh, an interesting record. From uh, the vault. This happens to be somebody connected a little bit to extended family. This is uh, the gentle country sound of George Hamilton IV. Oh, yeah. George Hamilton IV is a Nashville guy. Um, he happened to be—he happens to be friends with uh, my extended family. You're uh, making it up, Steve. No, I'm not. The, where I got a lot of those records from? Yeah. Her other family happened to be good friends with George Hamilton, and and her daughter Charlotte actually got a, a record produced with help from George Hamilton. And this is—he, uh, you know. He, I wouldn't call him a country legend. Look on the back, there's a picture of him with Chet Atkins and, and somebody else up there. I can't remember. Speaking of Chet is. Atkins, why the hell aren't you wearing that damn hat? Because it's hot. Oh, okay. And you didn't put the fan on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it picks up on the microphone. So, anyway, that's that's what we got from the vault. That's from the vault. Yeah. So, our from the vault, Steve's going to dig into his uh, untouched little collection that he's not really perused much and pull and, something And out. I have to add it into my, my Excel spreadsheet once I pull it from the vault. So, now it's part of the collection. Okay. Yeah. Will some stuff make it and some stuff not make it? I don't know. Or are you going to keep everything? Oh, I'll probably keep everything. Well, yeah. There's a lot of classical. I haven't really gotten into that so much yet. Yeah, I mean, okay. There's a ton of it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I love classical. Okay. okay. Um, what else you got over there? Well, um, record store day I went out and Did I, didn't, really? I didn't buy anything new. Yeah. This is a 2013 uh, limited uh, release. Uh, Flaming Lips. It's called Peace Sword. It's Peace a pretty, Sword. a pretty wicked cover. Yeah. I was real happy to get it. I went to the store with intentions of at least, you know, thinking seriously about the new Flaming Lips album they put out. The one with the black and silver. It's, really it's a 24-hour yeah. song that they broke up into 10 songs and put it on a, a on a record. Um, I hear it's pretty weird, which I like weird. Sure. And uh, I'll probably get it. But I went back. I went in there that day with that intention. They still had, it was like near 7 o'clock, so the store was almost done for the day. Right. They still had three copies. So I said, well, and I went and looked in their Flaming Lips area. They, they had this album, one copy, and I was like, well. No, I didn't see that one at all. I that one slipped past. It's, it's a 2013 release. It was a whole area? So uh, I went in there today. 
looking to say, well, let me see how many copies they have. Now, they still had three copies. Ah. And I was like, well, okay, I'm not going to buy it today. I'll come back and buy it when there's one left. Sure. And, and uh, so knowing that I saved money, I bought a couple records. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it, how it that's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, Final so I, I got another George Harrison record. Last year, oh, last, yeah. last week I picked up, uh, for two bucks, I picked up All Things Must Pass. This is a George Harrison record from 1978. Not as good. It's the, it has blow blowaways on there, which was a hit, um, but it, the album itself is not as good. I'll, I'll admit. Um, but also, I was happy to pick up uh, this. It's called Let's Active. Uh, it's a band out of out of Winston Salem, I believe. Really. Uh, Mitch Easter was the uh, I know guitarist. Mitch Easter. Okay. And uh, he Mitch Easter is well known as uh, the man who produced R.E.M.'s first record. They, oh, they, they right. actually recorded it in uh, Winston. There's a place called Drive-In Studio, and that's where they recorded this album, this Less Active album. This is huh. from 1983 on IRS Records. Very cool. And they, they had a, they kind of did a, they were in the scene of alt-rock during my college days, so yeah. they would tour in, in, in the college, on the college scene, so... I didn't actually see them, I don't think. Maybe I did. I can't remember half that so stuff. So you know this band, aside from the fact that they were from here, because you wasn't here. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know where they're from. But they toured around. I thought they were from scene. Athens. Very cool. So, hey, so that's, that's cool. you know, that was my little adventure. Okay. And so uh, I went out today and picked up a few records. My local uh, Recordorium. Yeah? And, um, Recordorium. Uh, yeah, man. I picked up some good stuff. Uh, I think we went to the same place. Yeah, you did, because the dude was like... Oh hey! Because I got a I got a text that said I know where you've been. <laughs> yeah. This guy was like, "Hey, uh, I hadn't seen you in a while." He's like, uh, "I just asked Steve um, where you've been." And I was like, <laughs> "He didn't. He didn't ask me nothing about like, that." You just asked Steve like last week. Asked Steve. He's like, "No, no, no!" Like literally, like a few minutes ago. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "I was like, hey Steve, you gonna go dig in the dam?" He was like, "No." Nah. And so he's like, uh, but he just left the place, and he was like, oh, hey, I didn't mean to. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> he thought I was like, oh, he said he wasn't going digging. I'm going digging. Uh, I got to get there before him. I got 10 minutes. But uh, No, it's on, it's on the way to my house. I'd let my yeah, dog out. Man, so I was like, shit. I got lots go of stuff in there, man. I've not, uh, I've not I been not. I didn't even dig. I, I, I went and I looked at Flaming Lips, and I looked in the front and saw those Let's Active and George, and I was like, I'm happy. Let's go. Uh, I picked some stuff up. I actually had a bigger stack and put some stuff back and chose a new record uh, because it's a band I've been listening to a whole lot lately, but, and we'll get into that in a minute. We actually played this early in the program. I've never been, uh, I hadn't been happier with a record in a long time. This is uh, Return to Forever featuring Chick Corea. Now, uh, you've got this record. I do. I'm pretty sure. Um, let's see. It's Chick Corea and uh, Stanley Clark, mm -hmm. Al DiMiola, mm -hmm. who, um, let me tell you what, if there's ever a man that looks like a raper, <laughs> Al Dimiola. Uh, I wouldn't leave my child alone with Al Dimiola to save my GD life. Okay. But guitar playing, he's the MF and man. He's the man. What's that? Re they also had that record I didn't buy it that you have. It's got Al Dimiola, uh, John McLaughlin, and that uh, Italian gentleman. Oh, the three uh, guitarists. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, Paco oh, de Lucia. Yeah, I saw that. Um, it was Paco Paparazzi. de Lucia, Al Di Miola, John McLaughlin. It was Al Di Miola and Paparazzi. They put uh, a couple albums out. They put Friday Night in San Francisco, yeah. which I have. There's another one that I have on, on my iPod that, that I forget. It's just three. This one, I think that was that's a really cool dig for two or three bucks or something. Four bucks even. This has had six, seven dollars on it. So I was like, ah, I can spend my money a little better. Where did today. you spend your money? Uh, we're moving right along. Back when Joe Walsh met the Bulls for It was in October. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. Joe Walsh if you check the, the calendar, it was 19 and something. Um, it, the, all, from the top. 19 and something. How about a little door, a soft parade? From what I can tell, I, che I checked the, uh, in the dead wax, the, uh, the, in the runoff matrix. I found that the, um, this is like a, a mid 70s repressing of the door, soft parade. Sure. But I picked it up for like seven bucks. I don't have this in my Doris collection, which is growing uh, every time I can find something for a decent price. This was in pretty decent shape. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. mind that it's not the OG pressing. I don't want to spend a bunch of money for no reason. But uh, I don't know sound quality wise this one versus others, but I'm interested to see uh, what it holds for me in my ears there, Steve. I hope, I hope, I hope it I hope fares good well. Things, when I hear music most of the time, I love the Doors. I like it to um, really just make an impact on me as a man. And is, I leave a lot of room for that to happen. Does it change you? It does. 
Let's have a little more vodka. Because this isn't going well enough already. Still digging. <laughs> no, we're still digging. I got one more record to talk about this evening, folks. And I don't, I don't, I'm not one to buy a bunch of uh, new records a lot of times. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm much more of a crate digger. Sure. But I tell you what, I've been getting into a lot of the stoner rock. You know, a lot of the yeah, uh, you have stoner God. rock, the desert rock. I'm at work, and I, it sounds like there's a mower outside the window. Well, I know that's that's more the drone mm -hmm. stuff. We're not talking sun mm -hmm. on that side of things. <laughs> but like, uh, you know, you know, Caius was my biggest. Okay. You know, Queens start, of the Stone Age. Caius, Queens of the Stone Age, and then you start you start branching out from there. You learn of other bands, and um, I've been Most listening. Most of them use guitars. Yeah. Good guitars. Top of the line, uh, they're not really top of the line. So I've been listening to a lot of Fu Manchu, and it just so happened I buzzed through the new Fu section Manchu. they had. What do you know about Fu Manchu? Now, Fu Manchu is a, a stoner rock band from California. They've been around a long time. That I always appreciate their cool artwork. They always I know have nothing, like, but there's a surfboard in the back of an El Camino. Yeah. And what this is, is, well, I, I'll tell you, just a little more background on the band. They're... Um, they use really cool artwork that I really appreciate. A lot of like uh, Evil Knievel style artwork, old school skateboarding style, like banana board type. Evil Knievel was a great uh, artist. Pool, pool skating kind of shit. And uh, they just use, their flyers are cool. And they do all of their albums previous to recording them. They do them on four tracks. Four tracks. Which we know, you know we're a big fan of four tracks on the program. Um, and so. I know uh, you love analog. Absolutely. And so I've been jamming a lot of that, and this one I came across. It's called California Crossings, California Crossing Demos. And uh, if you check this out, look at the cover here. This is actually an unofficial release. Um, yeah, California there's, there's Crossing. No, there's no label. There's no. Right. California Crossing came out in 2002. And in 2010, they released the demos on this vinyl. Now, from what I can tell, there was two versions of the vinyl that was released, and I'm just going from what I briefly read on Discogs. There's the gray version that was kind of the more uh, widely spread, and then there was the uh, 2,000 copies of red pressed for fan club members. Fan club? And, uh, Look at that. You got a red one. I got a red one. Look at you, Mr. I red. I don't know if that Mr. Meant. Fan club. They were a lot more sought after and a little more pricey, but I don't know. I still Fu don't know. Fu Manchu fan club. I don't want to... Uh, Go yeah, out on a limb. Yeah, and you say might that, not get all. This record's might, worth four hundred and fifty dollars. You might not have all the facts. <laughs> it's worth all that that I said on it. Just the facts, man. Just the facts. I don't want to say that yet, but I was I was really expecting to see the silver one. Uh huh. Uh, red one is in presence. We get off of this uh, uh, program we're doing here. Yeah. I'm jamming this. We're gonna get crazy for a few minutes. Okay. I'm talking. And then about we all go to bed so we can wake up and go to Merle Fest. We're going to Merle Fest. Yeah. Now. I need some of this Mitchell. Things are getting heated up here. Things are just can't go wrong with Mitchell. Man, can't. I tell you it's what. It's a forty-eight hour deodorant, I think. What I read. What do you need? Do you need deodorant for forty-eight hours? There's been some days, what dude. What the heck? If you snort enough Ritalin. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. All I right, tell you so. what. I'm, run, I'm I'm obviously talking too much. We're going to go into a soda speak. Yeah. Are you thirsty? I'm thirsty. I'm not so thirsty. Maybe I'll just do something else. I'm going to play with my magnets. You're going to play with your magnets? So, uh, yeah, we're going to have an epic, so to speak. We've got a return player to the program this evening. Somebody's not joined us here in a little bit. Um, He's an expert on soda. He's an expert on soda. And uh, there's, I think there's one more in there. What was the other one he was going to do? All the... Uh, Tomb of Leaders, that yellow one. Yeah, man. Okay. All right. We welcome the bossman back to the program. Uh, uh, this is the edition of uh, So to Speak and uh, Chip Chat. It's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. while. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. Well, hey, man. Big up for these shirts, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, but my only complaint. Yeah. Cause I gotta complain about something. Is that I wanted it in a halter top. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't selling it because he was like, that's a summer line, this is spring. Dude, pair of because, scissors. Yeah. Well I wanted to do like the string, like cut it here and then have like the string. Before that, let me give you let me give you, you know some what advice. Mean? What you gotta do is go in and like blast your sets just to get all your reps in. Yeah. Just to uh, get that your core, bro. You gotta blast sets. 
uh, just to get all your sets in. That's what or, I was or, thinking. Or I gave you the V your mother always wanted you to yeah. have. That's what I was thinking. That's what you That's need. What I was thinking. So here for this, so to speak, you went out uh, of town, you picked up a bunch of stuff for so to speak and chip chips. Yeah, I've been digging. I've been yeah, all over the place. Uh, no, no, no. And so, uh, Actually, I kind of cheated. This is a little Czech cola here. You did cheat. It's a pineapple soda. I'm drinking this uh, pop all vodka. Big up to da Doug hey, Stanhope. Is, is that a liter of cola? Um, and I poured some of that and uh, pour some more of it. And this uh, this Czech. Hey, could you give me a glass? This Czech pineapple soda has made a terrific mixer. I bet uh, you. I bet you. And, and this Bob, and, and the Czech. Bags. This is a deal. This okay. is a deal. We were sliding out of town. And we were in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yep. The Redneck Riviera, maybe? I think that's what they call it. Um, over Easter, because that's what all Yankees do. Is I like they go over to, easy. Is they go to Myrtle Beach for Easter. New Yorkers, Jersey, some Canadian cats. It was like I was back home. Yeah. Um, making casseroles and shit. Making casseroles, eating bagels, lox and cheese, yeah, you know. You had biscuits up there. Nah, I really wasn't a biscuit cat until I moved down here. They're non-existent. Well, not not at well. No, you. you I go, mean, Mickey uh, D's a cafe up there. You no. Know, the best breakfast in the world. It'll except, be toast. Except there's no biscuit. But they'll give you the option for an English muffin. It's not the same. Whoa. They got everything got except whoa, the biscuit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, I know. Well, they're sleeping on it. They're sleeping on it. So you picked this up where? Oh, yeah. We, we picked this up at a Bilo, which is uh, a pretty decent little grocery store. Now, here's a little background on the Bilo uh, Cause you got some, Because you got some background in it. Um, Bilo is owned by the a Ajo mm. Corporation. And a little inside information. The Ajo? Ajo. Oh, Ajo. Ahold with a D. D. Um, my dad actually retired from that company. Yeah, you, your dad was a grocer, wasn't he? He was, and uh, that's why I know so much about sodas and chips. And uh, but he pronounced dab. But let me tell you, <laughs> um, he did retire from that company. We don't have Bilo's around here anymore, no. but you see them down at the coast. And, uh, they're actually out of Greenville, uh, South Carolina. And let me tell Which you, Greenville's what, an awesome city. This is what's even creepier, and you should know this too. Check sodas that's a Win dixie product it is all day long and i'm not real sure how czech sodas have ended up in a bilo maybe maybe czech and maybe Win dixie and bilo are like the same company but in different regions that has different names it's kind true. of it kind of like that big boy restaurant back in the day i know back in the day though bilo didn't carry czech they had their own like name brand. Because we didn't have Bilo's up north. Mm -hmm. We didn't have Bilo's. And a Bilo's a decent grocery store. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was decent. It's, it's a little bit, it's in the Lowe's Foods, uh, Harris Teeter end of things in a lot of ways. Back in the day, they yeah. were, it was a higher end grocery store. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's begin. Makes a great mixer. That's a good soda. Well, it, it, it's definitely, sweet. it's sweet. It's, it, it's more like a kid's soda. It is. Because, I mean, I'm, I have a refined palate. When it comes to uh, high, high fructose corn syrup, I can really taste the years, you know? Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's it a, is a little sweet. It's a little medicine. Yeah, tell me yeah. what that soda tastes like. What do you think? Is it good? Uh, it's, a thumbs down. it's thumbs up, but just know it's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Just know it's sweet going into it. It's not an everyday it's all the time. artificial flavoring or what, what's in it? Corn syrup. It's very corn syrup. the logo there. Yeah, it says, it says put your third. Not a lot of stuff. Check. Carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, sodium benzate, food starch That's modified. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Some does, dyes. It doesn't have blue number five in it, does it? I don't think so. That makes you go bonkers, doesn't Cheryl. it? Oh, blue number one makes me have seizures. It's right here. All right. All right, what's our next soda here? We got a Fanta strawberry. It is. Oh, uh, Fanta strawberry. We're gonna need an opener for this guy. No this way, same. are you serious? Bust that guy for us. Fanta strawberry. Um, Fanta, we've had Fanta, a don't you want a we've Fanta, Fanta, I think Fanta, we had a knee-high strawberry in Yeah, knee-high. Possibly a Welch's. Um, so we're gonna try this uh, this this out. Kill your kill your beverage there, okay. and I'll pour you a little glass over there, but boss man. Clear your palate. <laughs> it's pouring right in my mouth. Do you need a biscuit? <laughs> To uh, clear your palate? No. You can't get that where you're from. 
take this record off the mm. I'm in a biscuit like in England. Yeah, see, that's different. It is, it is different business. Let's do this. Cheers. Okay, okay I'm just going to drink out of the thing. Do it. All right. Nice, uh, nice bouquet. Very strawberry. That's a decent soda right there. That's a decent. Oh, that's good. It's not overly carbonated. It's one you can just kill real fast. It's from Mexico, man. Whoa, come on now. That's, that's really crazy. I didn't know that. Well, you, you can almost tell by the bottle. Let's see what we got going on. Any bottle that's like this and that kind of Fresa. thickness. Fresa is strawberry. This is carbonated water, sugar. Real sugar. And where did you pick this up? Walmart. Walmart for a dollar. Walmart for a dollar. Hey, keep an eye out for the Walmart pandas. Walmart putting your local grocery store out of told, business. Hold that guy up. It's Phantom the Glass Bottle. Um, it's so wild. Apparently you pick it up at Walmart, so everybody's got Walmart, so we know you can pick that up. You know, I'll tell you what, though. Walmart really wasn't big, that big, up in uh, upstate New York. Really? It really, I mean. Yeah, we didn't have Walmarts for a long time. We were, all, we were a Kmart city, man. Yeah, we I had, remember as a kid driving like 45 minutes to go to the first Walmart. Oh yeah, like absolutely. Get out of here it was big time for you guys. Yeah, yeah. we were Kmart. All it was the way. in. It was true in like true. when you guys it got the first Troy one. Was it 24 hours or was it just no, a no, open? No, it wasn't 24 hours. Yeah, no, because we didn't get a 24 hour one for a long time. Twice as big as any store I'd ever been to at that point. Get out of here. Yeah. Mm. My city was built on rock and roll. <laughs> Okay, Steve, yeah. take it easy. Take it easy, buddy. Okay, I tell you what, take we'll it up easy. With this edition, so to speak, we're going to go into a chip chat. Chippy chat, chippy oh, chat. Oh, man, we got some uh, legit oh, wait, wait, We got some bangers. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 oh. I'm jumping the shark, oh, boss man. It don't matter, I'm keeping it moving. I'm jumping the shark. Open uh, the video. Okay, uh, what do uh, we got here? Come back after Barack is over. Yeah, come back. No, wait, no. Here you go. Here you go. I'm surrounded by chips. Oh, oh. This is a situation. All right. Let's see what we got going on here for this chip chat. Our open can special. How about a little Pringles multigrain original? There's nothing like a healthy chip to start the day. That's true. I've had the multigrain um, cheddar ones, I believe. I've not had the original. So let's see what Pringles the always comes with a consistent chip. That's true. Is this an, it's more of a crisp. Is this gonna be in a... Uh, Where's Sean's covers for his records? Over here. Down here. Give it to me. I don't know about it. We're in a live broadcast here, man. I know, give it to me. I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, where, where's the floor crew? Um, These yeah. are all right, but I mean, it's a healthy chip and I'm not really down with them, uh, you know. It's a good... I'm into toxins. It's a good, like, raw, plain chip. Uh-huh. But Pringles always comes correct. You never really get a bunch of That's a good chip to use with a dip. Mm -hmm. Doesn't carry flavor of its own. If you have a dip that's really overpowering. Well, I don't think you could do a thick dip with that. That's not like a wavy chip. It has to be like a loosey-goosey dip. But the cool thing with Pringles, they're easy, st easily stackable. So you can do two, three chips. Two, Pringles. three, four. Dip, never, dip, dip. I never even thought about that, just, man. It's as thick as you want it to be. Yeah, that's why you're Mikey Bananas. Procter & Gamble spent like a million dollars designing that that design, the stackable potato crisp design. I eat their shit. So I love Pringles. They're great. But their symbol, they got like satanic symbol. What? Their logo. It's no like way. I love them even more than Star them. and this little moon thing going on. And it's, I'm into moon it's, beams. It's got some links to some So weird, Wiccan. Weird yo, I'm so, yo, and so thank you for posting stuff. that thing on my Facebook the other day about Gem and the Holograms having a movie. There's going to be a new Gem and the Holograms movie. That's that's truly, truly, truly outrageous. You look, like, you look like freaking Josie and the Pussycats. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to quit doing that. I know. Huh? Mm. It's, it's giving him a downstairs no. boner. I know. What a freak. If you're not careful, you're going to wind up that guy with the, uh, the, the cat ears. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. The cat ears. Hey, we got some Miss Vickies. Went to Firehouse Subs today. This, this where you pick these Smokehouse BBQ chips up? Yep. Mmm. Oh. Way more kettly than I thought. Little chips. They're smaller, very thick. They got a nice, a nice bite to them. Really sweet, plus yep. a little smoke and uh, barbecue. Uh-huh. Good chip. Great chip. Now, I think you can not only find these at uh, your local Firehouse Subs. You can find them at all places. Any deli, type bodega joint, like any type of thing like that. I think we heard they're the Jersey actually, Mike. They carry them at um, Harris Teeter as well. 
It's a good chip, man. Good. It's, a, it's a good chip to throw with like your with your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay, I can see that. Did you show it? Yeah, I showed it. it. Yeah. All right. Mm. Good. <laughs> good. It's good. Good chip. And the colors are crunchy. It can make a little bag last a little longer uh -huh. with a big sandwich. Big time. <laughs> We're here to save you money. Yeah, Mr. Okay. We're saving um, you money, man. Keeping it topical. Yep. You know, last week was Easter. I mentioned that I always get a... You, um, you mean the resurrection day? Yes. When oh. uh, the uh, the spaceman comes back to... Uh, and uh, anyhow, in my Easter basket, my mom hooked me up with these things called cotton tails. I the, thought they were going to be like cotton candy. So the Easter bunny still visits you? Absolutely. Did you I wake get, up and there was a little basket next to your bed? Yes, sir. I know a big ass basket. Okay. That's a little basket. Did it have that fake grass in it? I hate no, it. Yeah, I can't no, tell you how much I hate that goddamn grass. It had some of that. It had, I'll show you. I ate a Reister bunny in like 25 seconds and it made my stomach hurt. <laughs> They're real big. The Reister bunny ain't I'm, a joke. Reister bunny? Reister bunny. What's that? The package is that, I mean, it's that big. From, from, Reese's, from Reese's brand, but it's a peanut. I had the, the egg. The Reese's yeah. eggs are awesome. Yeah, those are like that big. You see the I'm, bunny? This is that big. It's a Reese's bunny. I've never really liked Cadbury eggs, but I I've got one of those dude. in there. Let's make you eat it. For real? Yeah. Drink it. Why are they good? Yeah, oh yeah, awesome. it's so sweet. Well, it I like it. You. All right. Hey, uh, but these are actually white cheddar cheese ball snacks. Came in my Easter basket. Let's check them out. Why they got to be white? Why they got to be balls? Exactly. Why they got to be white balls? Big balls. Oh, they're balls. Oh, that's what I'm talking. We'll put them on my chin. <laughs> mm. Damn. <laughs> Those are good. They pretty much disintegrate you, in your mouth. What is it with you and your chin? He likes everything. He likes balls <laughs> on his chin. He likes balls you on know. his chin. <laughs> you know. You know. Not all That's jokes good. aside, let's be serious. This is a serious show and we're doing serious business here. <laughs> Those right there. Those are good. Are cotton pretty good. Cotton. It's a little bunny cottontail. Man. You got cheddar flavor? Well, a white cheddar, a white cheddar. So it's a subtle is it cheddar? Corn, yeah. Is it a corn product? It's like cheese balls. No, it's, it's, it's a cheese ball. It's, it's a space product. It's a cheese ball with a little different flavor, and these just tend to be a little lighter to me. It seems a little lighter. Yeah. yeah. Like, like puffs, where they disintegrate like, in your like mouth. Puffs, like the puffs? Exactly. It, it's lighter than the puff, though. Oh, it's a puff. You think? It's a ball, it's a ball of puff. Ball of puff. <laughs> and that's an Utz brand, which has been featured on this show numerous times. All right. We well, like the Utz. Yeah, Utz has been doing solid for a minute. And they've it, really stepped up their game. Keep oh, it, you're hitting a lot of chips tonight. Keep it I know. We got a couple for our uh, store brand challenge series. Store brand challenge. I didn't make a graphic this week. I didn't because I didn't want to. Because he's sleeping. Um, so this is a... Store you, brand you, challenge. Store, store brand challenge. challenge. Ba -dun -dun -dun. So you came back from the coast and you had a, uh, some stuff from not only Balo, which we mentioned before. One of these chips is from... Uh, let's hold this guy up. Look yeah. At that. Pig. The Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. Pig. yeah, the Piggly Wiggly. Out of South Carolina. It's, a South Carolina. Southern it's, okay. it's a good, decent, middle of the road, and they tend to be smaller to, to middle size grocery stores. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes a little dirtier on the edges, but it's a decent store. Like IGA. Yeah, yeah IGA. There may be some crack deals in the parking lot. Yeah, I don't know. I but mean, that, that ain't none of your business, no how. <laughs> you should be worried about what's none of your business. Uh, jalapeno. Just flavor. put your buggy back in the thing and keep it moving. You know? I so mean, what's the deal in crack? You yeah. Do something with you? Duh. What is that? Mmm. Mm. I'm a broken too. Pretty hot. It's a thick, thick chip. It's not quite kettle. It is kettle. It's, it is kettle. It's lighter. Big letters, I'll tell you what, for a store brand, this is a pretty solid chip. That is good. And it's not crazy kettle. It says it's, uh, it, claim, it claims to be made the old-fashioned way. Oh, oh! I didn't and, know kettle chips were made the old-fashioned. Well, old-fashioned, well, like old-fashioned, like how they did it back in the day in the South. Yeah, I think that means they had they used slaves to make it. No, no they, used they actually used kettles. That's they a whole different kettles. show. Like witches and stuff. Oh, no. like kettles. That's okay. Wow, that but, makes yo, more sense. This is a good. This is a solid store brand chip. I've never had a Piggly Wiggly stir brand chip, but this this is good. It's really good. Yeah. For uh, I mean Piggly Wiggly, I'll bring, I would I'm, say I'm bringing some of these. Home. I would hate to say would be a uh, more of a ghetto grocery store. 
And a lot of times, no. a lot that's of times. a really good store chip for a store that's, that's like not a top of the line. Yeah, that's not a top tier grocery store. Chinese I totally agree. Really like really it does. It's got a little Chinese kind of flavor to it. Also, from this is a Southern Home chip, which is a Bilo store brand. Which we Bilo. For the, and so to speak. Which is probably a, 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 a higher, higher tier. End. Yeah. A higher tier than a Piggly Wiggly. No, it's not. You don't think it is? No, absolutely. Not at all. Yes, sir. Go away. Yes, sir. Go to hell. Grocery I've business. only been to nice buy lows. I've never been to a shithole by buy low. They're good. I've been to kind of janky Piggly Wiggly, so. Look, just because your family went to buy low, not Piggly Wiggly? No, no we didn't shop there. the same level. Don't give me that. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're Dylan folks. You yeah. have worked there. No, no, no. Buy low is, you got is more of a Harris Teeter type store. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh no, yeah. No, no. Get out of here. Absolutely. Food line. Food absolutely. line at most. No way. This is a cheddar it, it, it and sour can, cream. It get, it's oh, probably no, ready to get bucked. No way. I like how they reverse oh. it. Theirs is southern, uh, no, sour cream and cheddar. Oh, it's different. Not cheddar and sour no, cream. No, because it, it's 75% cream and 25% cheddar. Hmm. A much lighter chip, though. That's a different flavor than the ruffles, like cheddar and sour cream. I'm not, I don't know if I totally. like it. I don't know if I like it, though. It's got a kind of a weird thing going on. I mean, that's just me. I'm not going to just hate on it and hate on it. But it's not my kind of cheddar. That's not the best cheddar and sour cream I've ever no. had. No. Well, because it's not. Catch them on sale. It's sour cream. And, it's it's sour cream and cheddar. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, you catch them on sale, maybe so, but I don't think it's the best sour cream and cheddar chip I've ever had. No, it's not. No. Mm. Disappointed. No, so dis wah, wah, wah. So no, disappointed. Disappointed. I mean, they're okay. They're okay. So yeah. sour cream hit you first? Yeah. But you know it? what? I didn't mention though, man. I'm sorry I was late into the show because you didn't tell me you moved studios to Studio B. Yeah, we're over here in Studio what's B. The, what, you, what, you, you were in on this meeting. Yeah, but I didn't, know they, I didn't know they went ahead and, you know, put the capital request in. They got the money allocated to, you, you know. Them, you chewed them out for the audio problems the week before. Oh, brutal. I don't even think it made to the DR. Turns out oh, we about broke even on the money. Probably pretty much. I tell you what, let's wrap up this edition of Chip Chat. Wrap it up. And while we're at it, we're going to wrap up this edition of Grown Man Record Night. We had a good time tonight. We uh, introduced a bunch of great yeah. records. We talked about Merle Fest, which we're going to tomorrow. We talked about Moog Fest, which is going on in Asheville. We talked about a bunch of cool records we picked up. Great sodas, great chips, store brand challenge. It's been a good time. We're going to have a good Friday night. We're going to continue to You only get one a week. Only one Friday a week. We're going to continue to jam some cool records here. So stay with us, the folks jamming with us on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the live stream. And be sure to check us out on the YouTube channel. Like the Facebook page? Like the Facebook page. Real Man Record Night? Talk about that. Live stream every Friday night, 8.30 p.m. on Ustream. And, and, All the segments will end up on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Machete Miller. And if, and, and if your location, you have MeTV, you should watch Dragnet. It's a great show. Absolutely. Of course you should. Of course you should. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on Grown Man Record Night. We sure do appreciate you, and we'll catch you next week with an all-new show, all-new topics, all-new baloney to discuss. And uh, until then, we'll see you on the YouTube channel. For the boss man, for Steve Fever, for Mikey Bananas, the whole staff and crew, we'll check you next week. She came to Sunday school